to me 
May God, for the praise of the holy glorious illustrious apostle and evangelist Matthew, grant thee to proclaim the word with great power for the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the holy gospel. Peace be to all. Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to possess eternal everlasting life? Jesus answered, Why do you question me about what is good? There is one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones he asked? Jesus replied, You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your mother and your father, and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to Jesus, I have kept all of these. What do I need to do further? Jesus told him, if you seek perfection, go, sell your possessions and give it to the poor. You will then have treasure in heaven. Afterwards, come back and follow me. Hearing these words, the young man went away sad, for his possessions were many. Jesus said to his disciples, I assure you, only with difficulty will a rich man enter into the kingdom of God. I repeat what I said. It is easier for a camel to pass through an eagle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were completely overwhelmed and exclaimed, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For man it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Glory. there was a small child and the small child went for the very very first time with her mother to a, a piano concert in a, in a big music hall and for those of you who are parents and many of you are you know the greatest fear is you just turn your head for one moment right and what happens the child scoots away that's exactly what happened. The mother turned away for just a moment and the girl wandered off. And, and the mom looked all over the place. But th this was a huge concert hall, many, many people, hundreds of people. She looked all around, she couldn't see the child. She was going to uh, get some ushers to help find the child, but then she heard something. It wasn't her child's voice, but it was something that she knew directly came from her child and she knew as a mother's instinct does in her heart my girl is okay this is from her you know what she heard she heard some music being plinked out on a piano key and she looked up on the stage and there was her little girl sitting at the piano on the stage in front of hundreds of people plinking out with one finger Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Well, her mother, of course, you know, as all parents would breathe the sigh of relief, but that relief was, was short-lived and soon turned, as many parents might, might also resonate with, to a sense of abject horror because at the same time the girl was blinking out twinkle, twinkle, little star with one finger on the keyboard, out on the stage walked the star of the show. The piano master, and, and he was walking towards the piano, getting ready to begin the, uh, the, the performance. But you know, instead of scooting the little girl away, 
and having people come over and, and escort her off the stage, you know, he sat down right next to her and, and very gently, with both hands, continued to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. She, with one hand, hitting a few clunker keys and missing a few notes, he with both hands as a master. And, and what a performance it was. And friends, I, I share that, that little tale with you because if you think about it, isn't that a wonderful example of the type of show that God wants to perform with us in our lives as well? You know, we're much like that little girl, even in our mistakes and limitations, even in our wanderings off and our disobediences. God, the Master, still loves us, sits next to us, fills in the missing pieces. All we need to do is trust. Trust comes up so often times in the Holy Scriptures. I think we can see that lesson in just about everything we hear in the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God. Uh, in the Gospel today, Deacon Charles chanted a, a rather familiar Scripture passage about a, a man who wanted to follow Jesus but went away sad because he couldn't bear himself to part with all of his possessions. And then Jesus said one of his more memorable sayings, It's easier for a camel to pass through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And oftentimes we think, well, this, this is a good lesson about being overly dependent on wealth. But today's reading is not so much a lesson against wealth and prosperity and riches as it is a reminder to be completely dependent on and trust in God for all things that we need. Everything belongs to God, right? Yes. The world, its resources, we belong to God, our finances, everything belongs to God. I mean, that's, that's the whole reason why we have this concept of, of giving back to God, called tithing. Nothing belongs to us. We can't take anything with us. We give a portion back to God as a way of saying, thank you for let me, letting me use these things temporarily in this side of your kingdom. And so God asks us again and again to trust him. You know, no matter how often we reflect on this idea of trusting in God, one thing always comes back. And sometimes it's so difficult to trust in the simple things. Here, here's what I mean. There's something catastrophic that's happening and your hands are tied and you have no other choices and your back's up against the wall. What do you do? You pray out to God, right? You trust. Maybe it's not the first thing you did, but it certainly is going to be one of the last things you do, right? You know where I think oftentimes we stumble? It's finding that ability to trust God in the ordinary, little, daily setbacks and frustrations and surprises that we encounter over and over, again and again, sometimes that no one else knows about it except you and me, except ourselves. When we're distracted, when we're preoccupied, when we're stressed out, that's when the evil one works overtime in our lives, and that's when we sometimes forget to rely on and trust in God. One of the, the saints of North America, perhaps you may have heard of him, St. John Newman. Ever hear of him? No. No, I'll tell you about him. He was a saint. He was Archbishop of Philadelphia. Um, 
read about him, Joe. Do, okay. do, do, a, do, do a Google search on him if you're not familiar with him. He, he lived oh, more than 100 years ago, 150 years ago or so. He was a relatively young man, died at a, at a young age. Um, but his words endure because they're profound. And, and St. John Newman, again, one of the saints of North America, Archbishop of Philadelphia, said that God gave each and every one of us a special and unique way to serve God and to fulfill that service. And for that reason, we have to trust because God put us in a position that only we can fulfill for a reason. Here's what he said. He said, and, and, and think about these words as your words. He said, quote, God created me, all of us, to do him a definite service. He committed some work to me, all of us, which he has not committed to anyone else. I have a mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told about it in the next. I shall do good. I shall do his work. I shall keep his commandments and serve him in my calling. Therefore, I will trust him. Whatever way I can, whenever I am, I can never be thrown away. If I am in sickness, my sickness will serve God. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow will serve God. In my sickness, in my perplexity, in my sorrow, these may be necessary causes of some great end, which is beyond me to understand, but God does nothing in vain. You know, we have so many examples in, in the Holy Scriptures of people who were pretty much the same unknown, unexpected boat that sometimes we find ourselves in. Maybe we're like David. Remember David from the Bible? Up against a giant, Goliath, but the hand of God defeated the giant with a slingshot. Maybe we feel like Elias. Remember with Elias, we just celebrated his feast day not too long ago? Fleeing for our lives and seeking refuge in a cave, but God sustained him with the help of a small raven bringing food. Or Moses, backed up against a corner, well maybe not a corner, but a, a wall of water, the Red Sea. And the, the sea parted, leading to safety. Moses and all those following him. The point is, God cares for us. And sometimes the solutions, as we see from these examples of Holy Scriptures, as we hear from the words of St. John Newman, as, as you have experienced, perhaps, pray God in your own life, sometimes the solutions come at the last minute. Sometimes they're completely unexpected. Sometimes we can see them and we have an aha moment. Sometimes other can, others can see them and share that with us. And sometimes, friends, maybe even many times, it's just an intuition, God speaking in our head and in our heart that only we hear, perceive, or understand. But it's God, because God dwells within us, and he guides us, and we, for our part, are called to trust. All right, Joe, I'm going to pick on you. Is that okay? Yes. You still like stories? Yes. All right, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you a story that kind of summarizes all this up here. Once there was a man who was praying to God for some help. And he prayed very earnestly. Lord, help me. I can't figure out the solution to this problem. Lord, help me. I got to win the lottery. Please, Lord, help me win the lottery. What do you think God said? No. God didn't say anything. <laughs> so the man prayed another time. Lord, please help me. The only thing that's going to help me is if I win the Powerball. <laughs> what do you think God said? Nothing. Nothing. He prayed again. Lord, help me. The only thing that's going to help me is to win the super jackpot. Lord, please help me. What do you think God said? He gave him the numbers. <laughs> Was that you too? Yeah. You know what God said? He said, first you got to buy a ticket. 
But it's an example, friends, as silly as it is, of the synergy, the working together that God wants to have with us and the reason why we trust God. <clears throat> Seek first my kingship over you, my way of holiness, and all that you need will be given you besides. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ. Slava Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ. Slava salvation. May the Lord God attend to the sick and the suffering and the hospitalized and those who need his mercies. And all you Christians of the true faith always, now and ever on, forever.
crucifix with many eyes, turn aloft upon their wings, singing, shouting, crying out, saying in triumph.
to Deacon Charles on the falling asleep in the Lord of his uncle Gus, Gustav, who was buried on Thursday. Uh, uncle Gus, Deacon's uncle Gus, was the last of his living relatives among his tier of aunts and uncles, so for those of you who have been in that same position, you know it's, it's kind of like the end of an era, uh, and so it's a, a special meeting to Deacon, so Deacon, we, we offer all of our collective condolences for Uncle Gus and his falling asleep in the Lord. Uh, we have a holy day on Friday. Cantor Patricia, you have to be quiet. Deacon, you have to be quiet. Uh, but there will be a Hail Mary for anybody who can tell me whose holy day is on Friday. St. John. John the Baptist. Okay, so Christy gets a, a Hail Mary. Now, there'll be another Hail Mary in, in my evening prayers for anybody who can tell me which feast day of St. John the Baptist we're celebrating. The beheading, okay, Adrian also gets a Hail Mary. And, and a third Hail Mary for anybody who can tell me what do we refrain from in honor of St. John the Baptist on that particular Friday? Deacon, you're supposed to be quiet. That was George. That was George. What did George say? I said getting beheaded. Getting beheaded. <laughs> George, you owe me a Hail Mary. <laughs> I'm going to give you two. Uh, He's going to give me two. Well, by tradition, we, we refrain from eating anything in the shape of a head, like a head of lettuce, a head of cabbage, and so forth. And we, we, you know, we do these things as a, as a little reminder. It's part of our heritage and culture. Uh, but you might be scratching your head right now and wondering why would we want to celebrate somebody's beheading? Now, that sounds really, you know, rather macabre and, and not, not very um, worthy of celebration because not only do we celebrate uh, the beheading of John the Baptist, liturgically celebrate, that's not like celebrate hip hip hooray, uh, but we celebrate one time the finding of his head, a second time the finding of his head, the third time the finding of his head. This poor man was beheaded and lost his head three times and, and the whole church celebrated the finding of these heads. 
for centuries. So, do you have any clue why? What does the head do? Sing. It's, it sings. It sings God's praises, but in John's case, it also spoke the truth. John was beheaded because he spoke the truth to Herod and Herodias and told them that which they did not want to hear. And, and, and the beheading of John the Baptist as a liturgical feast day and the finding of his head subsequently one, two, three times is significant because in a very simple sense it reminds us that the truths of God cannot be silenced. Truth cannot be silenced. And that's what John spoke, the truth. My mouth shall speak wisdom. Prudence shall be the utterance of my lips, we read in the Psalms. That's what John lived. That's what he believed. That's what he spoke. That's what he died for. Liturgically, that's what we continue to celebrate. God loves honesty. God speaks through the truth. And so, looking at this feast day in that particular way, it takes on a different shade of understanding. We're celebrating the speaking of God's truth through his holy martyrs and through all of the prophets. And pray God in our lives as well. So liturgically, the feast of the beheading of St. John the Baptist will be celebrated on Friday of this week at 7 p.m. here inside the church. Uh, also, we will have a Zoom meeting tonight at 7 o'clock with all of our Sunday school teachers. Even though we're in the midst of a global pandemic, we still have to continue uh, worshiping God online and in church, and we have to continue preparing our children, our young people. And so we will also have a Zoom meeting to prepare for Sunday school class implementation. We don't know how this is all going to work. It certainly is true that the beginning of the school year will probably be different than the end of the school year. Pray God by the end of the school term we'll be able to meet in person. But our Eparchy of Passaic has sent out some very practical um, suggestions on how we can implement Sunday school lessons uh, online, at least in the beginning. So we're going to have a meeting with our teachers. Then the next step is have a meeting with the parents. And this is really kind of like a model for, for all of us. Because, you know, even though the world is a little bit different, we don't stop doing the things that are important to do. And that includes worship and prayer as well. So I just want to keep you informed of, of what's going on. And, and of course, we will have our, our Zoom coffee social right after liturgy. We're going to start approximately 1145, okay? So I think that's it for the announcements. God willing, we'll, we'll see you on Friday for the Feast of the Beheading of John the Baptist. And if we don't see you in person, uh, you'll be seeing us online, okay? Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory to Christ. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. His grace and loving kindness always. Now and ever and forever. Trusting care of the Mother of God. 